took my fucking cell phone, man. Martin, empty your pockets. What? I saw you in the bathroom, man. Somebody dialed my phone. Shut the fuck up. Unbelievable. It's unacceptable after all the coke I've wasted on you people. Throw it away. Fucking cell phone. Three! Whoa! One! Whoa! Zero! Oh! What's happening to me? What's happening? Oh my god! Hey everybody, welcome back to the Whitey the White Guys show. I'm Whitey. And today I'm going to do a, a review of the film This Is The End, starring Seth Rogen, James Franco, Craig Robinson, Jonah Hill, just a bunch of people. And uh, if you're not familiar, This Is The End, what happens is a bunch of celebrities go over to James Franco's house. They all play themselves. They're in the universe where they are themselves. So James Franco playing James Franco. And all these celebrities, they go to James Franco's house. And while they're at this party... The apocalypse happens, and all the good, decent people are carried up off to heaven, and everybody else is left behind. And there's actually a funny bit where Seth Rogen and Jay, they go to a uh, convenience store to get a pack of smokes. Uh, the apocalypse happens, all the good people are whisked away. Then chaos ensues, a bunch of people get killed. When they get back to Franco's house, nobody even noticed it happened. The joke being, of course... Hollywood actors are so selfish and such incredible assholes that they wouldn't go to heaven in the uh, event of the apocalypse. And basically, a bunch of people get killed. Uh, Michael Sarah's impaled, which is wonderful. Um, my favorite part of the film is watching all these celebrities stomp on each other and, and die amid the chaos. Um, and then the handful of guys that are left, they're going to basically dig in at James Franco's house and try to find a way to survive the apocalypse. That's pretty much the film. From there on, it's basically problem solving. Something comes up, the crisis arises. How do we get out of this one? Um, and it sucked. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't a good movie. It was a really good premise. That's a very good idea of a film to make. And it just fe felt like uh, the writers got to page eighteen, and then just the rest was like, uh, "Fuck it, fill it with fluff." And a, a reason why I think this happened is because it's not even really a movie. It's more an hour and a half long commercial. It's all product placement. So what happened was they, they came up with the premise and then they sold sold out to all these different companies. We'll put your product in our film, you know, pay us money. And so it's guaranteed money because no matter what the film subsequently does in theaters, You've got your money. So there's a scene where there's a Milky Way. And it was like, oh, I want the Milky They're sitting over a table. they got the fucking apocalypse happening outside. And then they're standing there arguing about the who gets the Milky Way. And, I, man, maybe people found that funny. I, it just fell flat for me. But it's, it's such a sellout because it's like, okay, Milky Way paid us money. Let's put a scene in there. Or maybe even the Milky Way executives said, let's put a scene in there. And that's what wrote the material was, you know, how do we make money on this sellout to product placement? Product placement, I have no problem with it. You know, if you can make money, find a way to make money, go make your money. But it's something where you write a scene, cast the directors, you direct where you're going to direct, all those things. And then in the background, you put some Coca-Cola or something and you get your check. You know, you put some, some, you know, on the fridge is, is, um, you know, Lucky Charms, and you get you get your money for having that in the background. I got no problem with that. I got no fight. But when entire scenes are dictated because somebody gave us wrote us a check to put Milky Way in there, uh, there's a scene where um, Jay and uh, Seth Rogen they get back from an airport. They go over to Seth Rogen's house, um, and it's all just a bunch of stuff laid out on the table. And here's you know Starburst and all this. It's oh, and Seth Rogen's like, it's your favorite stuff. I wanted to. It's like, you, you wrote this whole sequence just to get paid that money for putting Starburst on the table. It's the only reason this is happening. And it just wasn't, never struck me as that particularly funny. It had its funny moments uh, here and there. It's had, it had its funny one-liners, whatnot, and some funny concepts. But, um, you know, performances, is, is comedic performances didn't weren't bad at all. The guy, Jay, I don't even, I know he was in um, the other movie, but... Uh, 
He actually does a good job. I, I didn't mind his uh, his acting at all. I thought, uh, by and large, everybody did a good job. But uh, they just weren't given anything to do. You know, they're bickering over water. and They're bickering over peanuts or something. It's like, you've got the fucking apocalypse happening outside. And this is what you go, got going on? Like, there's a bit where Jonah Hill gets uh, possessed. And they have to go get the uh, demon out of him. I thought they got some funny out of that. But it was like, the few and the far between. So, I'm not going on, drawing on about this movie too much. There's not a whole lot to say about it. For me, it fell flat. It didn't work out. And the sad thing is, they had a good premise. They had a good idea. They could have had a good film here. And they just didn't put the, the uh, effort into the writing. And they came up with some... Again, you're pitching about who gets the Milky Way. There's the fucking apocalypse. There's so much more you could have done here. So, that's it for me at the Whitey White Guy Show. I am Whitey. Uh, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, share, all that jazz, and uh, good journey.